controversy, should evolution and creationism be taught side by side in public schools? According to a recent poll, most Americans say yes. In fact, that same pollster said, what this basically tells us, quote unquote, is that in contentious issues, many people take the default position. Teach both sides and let people make up their own minds, end quote. Will the public schools then return to that view? Is that bad science or the teaching of religion? My guests, Moin Rahman from the Center for Inquiry and Tom DeRosa from the Creative uh, Studies Institute will uh, answer that question, help me in that segment. Now, Moin, about mm -hmm. 100 scientific experts, many mm -hmm. of them biologists, chemists, mm -hmm. nuclear biologists, physicists, mm -hmm. including reps from the uh, National mm -hmm. Museum of National History at the mm -hmm. Smithsonian, mm -hmm. they put a document a couple of years ago, and it mm -hmm. was called, quote, A Scientific Descent from Darwinism. Mm -hmm. It said in summary, quote, we are skeptical of claims mm -hmm. for the ability of random mutation mm -hmm. and natural selection to account for the complexity of life. Mm -hmm. Careful examination of mm -hmm. the evidence of for Darwinism mm -hmm. should be encouraged. Mm -hmm. You believe in inquiry and in skepticism. Yes, that is right. Shouldn't yes. that work on both sides? Absolutely. And where this should be done is in 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 research institutions where the scientists go after the data to determine whether Darwinian uh, theory is true or false. Like the famous uh, biologist J. B. S. Haldane said, "Show me a rabbit in the Precambrian period, I would disavow uh, Darwinian theory because there were no rabbits before the pre." Cambrian period. So the fossil record is very strong. There are gaps. Almost every theory has a gap. So it doesn't mean that because, uh, so because there is some uh, absence of evidence in certain periods of time uh, that uh, evolution did not take place because not everything fossilizes. Right. There, there could be an explanation why a rabbit is not found in the Cambrian age and that might not be because uh, yeah, we, we believe that evolution has taken place, but it could have been uh, the fact that uh, the way the fossils are arranged could have been by a universal flood. And Moin, isn't it, mm -hmm. isn't it uh, a right to be able to present that mm -hmm. in the classroom? Mm -hmm. I mean, even though the Bible talks about a worldwide flood, mm -hmm. I, I believe there's enough evidence to present it in the classroom. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about science and we talk about the fact that mm -hmm. science, yes, can, yes, we, mm -hmm. we, we discover new things all the time. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing, Moin. Mm -hmm. The more we discover, the more mm -hmm. we realize, and this mm -hmm. has happened since 1945 mm -hmm. or later with the discovery of the electron mm -hmm. microscope, mm -hmm. that there is more to life mm -hmm. than what we thought. We thought actually the more we uncover, the more we see mm -hmm. uh, an overwhelming complexity. Okay, I mean, I, yes, I, your I, point is well taken. As I said, because something is complex, we cannot shirk our responsibilities or our intellect and say that an intelligent agent was designed. No, well, it's uh, not, well, designed the, uh, let, let me finish my thought here. Because if you look at this process of random mutation and cumulative selection, uh, the evidence, is, evidence shows that it is a very blind process. There is no intelligent creator sitting in his workshop with a box of tools trying to assemble an eye. There were many intermediate stages where a patch of light sensitive skin turned into an eye over millions of years of evolution because that, those genes that made an eye, mm -hmm. uh, which made an eye better and better, were selected because of the environment, because this, this organism was able to uh, hunt and find food for well, itself. I you know, when you talk about an eye, mm -hmm. I, I just, in yes. Time Magazine, they talk about mm -hmm. an eye. Okay. And they say, imagine. Mm -hmm. And they use the word imagine mm -hmm. three times in trying to explain. The scientist uh, says that, you mm -hmm. know, uh, uh, actually, nonsense. All all biologists say mm -hmm. that, hey, this could happen. This is what the mm -hmm. Time Magazine says, that, okay. that yeah. it could happen. But here's the word. Mm -hmm. Imagine, imagine, imagine. And so that's not science, Moin. Mm -hmm. See, the problem here is that mm -hmm. when we look at science and we mm -hmm. see that as we investigate, mm -hmm. we're brought to the fact, face-to-face, mm -hmm. -face, that it is more complex than ever before. Mm -hmm. And if we keep finding complexity, <laughs> we, we mm -hmm. find intelligence in living things, and, living, mm -hmm. and we find intelligence in physical things, mm -hmm. there has to be a plan. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you have intelligence, you know about this, if mm -hmm. you have a, you have mm -hmm. a plan intelligence, mm -hmm. there has to be an outside intelligent agent to do that. Mm -hmm. And let's follow up on that. There was a quote, very interesting one I have, that I found mm -hmm. from another skeptic, a scientist, a skeptic mm -hmm. of the intelligent design argument, but as we talk about origins, he said this in answering the question, how did we get here? Quote, an honest man, armed with all the knowledge available to us now, could only state that in some sense, the origin of life appears at the moment to be a miracle. So many are the conditions, the conditions which would have to be satisfied to get it going. End quote. That was Francis Crick 
a Nobel mm -hmm. Prize biochemist mm -hmm. yes. who is a spiritual skeptic. Mm -hmm. That's a profound statement, but kids, mm -hmm. whether they be in uh, high mm -hmm. school and public schools, they won't get a chance to read or hear that. Is that mm -hmm. good science? Is no, that fair? No, th that is a good thought from Francis Crick. And but why don't kids know about yes, that Yes, of thought? course. It can be taught in the humanities or the history of human thought. If there why is, not if in science? science because it is, science. It, 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 because a sci scientists come in very, di various shades and uh, colors. They have different opinions. Some are religious, some are atheistic, some are agnostic. So there are different opinions on that. But if you look at science, it's a very objective enterprise. And in fact, just to touch upon the intelligent design uh, point there from Tom, actually there, there is a lot of evidence to say that the, the way the species have evolved, there is a lot of unintelligence to it. You know, human, uh, human males have nipples. You don't need nipples. Males don't need nipples. No, that's, that's if, just you, if you look at the laryngeal nerve, there is no direct connection well, between the larynx and the brain. It takes a very circuitous path. It kind of mm -hmm. drops down to the thorax, makes a couple of rounds uh, around the rib, and again goes back to the brain. If, if you take the case of a giraffe, that one foot distance is equivalent to 20 feet now. <laughs> so mm. look at look at it. It is, it is just a random process. Nature is a laboratory where it is constantly experimenting with various ways of trying to make a species and a genes right. survive. Well, but, Wayne, Wayne I, you know, when you talk about, mm -hmm. when you talk about the giraffe, I think mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. the design of giraffe having to, to drink water and, and mm -hmm. you know, if it bend down mm -hmm. and the normal process is it, it Mm -hmm. it would the brain would completely bust a break and merge and, and mm -hmm. explode mm -hmm. but because of design that that mm -hmm. giraffe could drink mm -hmm. water mm -hmm. when you talk about uh, vestigial organs those things that we talk you know mm -hmm. uh, the bottom line is that yes science mm -hmm. has proved mm -hmm. that those vestigial organs mm -hmm. are useful you mm -hmm. know, and so when we look in terms of mishaps in design, we—I mm -hmm. believe science mm -hmm. has uh, as, mm -hmm. as as structured as as mm -hmm. uh, as a process. Mm -hmm. We're able to to come mm -hmm. to the conclusion that there is uh, a reason for those things. Okay. And so you know, when I mm -hmm. look when I look in terms of of students being exposed to the fact that evolution—and this is dogmatic teaching of evolution—evolution mm -hmm. evolution is a fact and can't be questioned. Mm -hmm. That's the problem, mm -hmm. and that's why I believe in intelligent design in D Dover, and I believe in uh, schools throughout the nation mm -hmm. need to hear that. There's alternatives to this thing. And in fact, what's interesting now, I do want to mm -hmm. ask you, Moyne, because mm -hmm. again, we're talking about the science textbooks and the kids and mm -hmm. what they're taught in terms of science mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. In reading the book, The Icons of Evolution by Jonathan Wells, a geologist from Princeton, mm -hmm. we found that, for instance, the Stanley Miller experiment of mm -hmm. 1953, yeah, mm -hmm. due to improper chemicals being that used, is right. has yes. been disproven. Mm -hmm. We also found that Darwin's Tree of Life, mm -hmm. that drawing still in textbooks being mm -hmm. taught as absolute law, mm -hmm. has been disproven. Mm -hmm. And we also have uh, from the study of the Archaeopteryx missing link, mm -hmm. uh, we also talk about Heckel's embryonic drawings. Mm -hmm. That was a fraud as far back as 1860. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I want you to kind of talk like. to that. Hold on to that thought. Mm -hmm. I, I want you to develop an answer for oh, that. Okay, sure. And have an answer for that in our last uh, segment. One okay? Ready? Okay. Very good. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. Even though our state's public school standards require the teaching of evolution and not creationism to explain the origins of life and man's existence, millions of dollars in state money, in case you don't know, go to teach the story of biblical creation thanks to Florida's voucher programs, and it happens through private schools. In fact, for years, biblical education has been legal in public schools in terms of being studied as Western civilization's most influential and historic book. Taxpayer dollars and popular opinion already have foot the bill there, and they have their foot in the door, but many local school boards are scared of legal battles with civil libertarians and are hesitant to go forward. So what now? Who decides and what's at stake? That's been our focus today, creation versus evolution, and may it be coming to Florida schools sometime soon. Moin Raman is with us from the Center for Inquiry, uh, who opposes this, this educational push mm -hmm. to teach intelligent design or creationism. He's an evolutionist in terms of his science, but as I was pointing out in mm -hmm. the textbooks last mm -hmm. segment, mm -hmm. there has been discovery mm -hmm. that much of the things that the kids are learning as mm -hmm. absolute fact in science mm -hmm. and the experiments they were based on mm -hmm. is fraudulent. So isn't that something we need to deal with and do something about? Uh, I don't know to what extent they are fraudulent, but let me point at this fact though. If you look at it, theory or if you look at how science moves on or makes progress as and when new evidence comes our way or new techniques and sciences, sub-sciences develop, uh, things do change, things need to be updated. So if those textbooks are outdated, perhaps uh, they belong to antiquity. You know, there are some <laughs> books that have revealed that there were the, the so-called revelations, they too have been outdated. If you look at science, they all happened before the advent of science. Those were the modes of human thought. But you know, Moin, mm -hmm. I 